Okay, this is our next lesson for 8th grade, and it's actually, I think, investigation too. So it's not technically uh, one of our lessons. Uh, we finished with lesson 20, and now we're looking at investigation two, and it's a very important topic. <clears throat> we have this big word in here. Uh, it's called the Pythagorean Theorem, and it's a very important geometric and algebraic concept. And as we'll find out, it's been around for a long time, and it can help us figure out a lot of things. Uh, and we'll show you what we're talking about here. All right. So in this lesson, here are the things that we're going to learn and focus on. Uh, we're going to focus on how to distinguish between the legs and the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse would be a new word probably on a right triangle. So we're talking about right triangles. Oops. Uh, secondly, how to solve for a leg or hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll be doing some solving, algebra. Uh, how to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle based on the side length. And lastly, um, we're going to see how irrational numbers are common with this theorem. So remember those irrational numbers are the really weird ones, usually the square roots that we can't figure out or cubed roots or things like that. Today we're going to be talking about square roots. Alright, here we go. First thing we need to recognize are the parts of a right triangle. Remember we talked about legs and hypotenuse. Okay, here's what we're talking about. Now I've tried to highlight the important things in here so that if you're looking to take notes, these are the things you'd want to write down. Because um, when we go over things in class or problems that we're going to be doing, it might be good to refer back. So, uh, the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. All right. Now, so here we can see a leg and a leg and the hypotenuse. So it tells us to notice something here. Notice that the legs are the sides that form the right angle. So the legs come together and they form this right angle right here. Okay. And the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. So it's pretty easy to remember uh, what the hypotenuse is because it's the one opposite your right angle. Okay. And then the legs, remember, are the ones that form that right angle. So um, pretty easy to remember if we can keep that in, in, uh, in our brains. All right, now it says, every right triangle has a property that makes right triangles very important in mathematics. The area of a square drawn on the hypotenuse of a right triangle equals the sum of the areas of the squares drawn on the legs. That sounds like a mouthful. Sounds a little confusing. So, if we take a triangle like this, a right triangle, with a leg of three, a leg of four, and a hypotenuse of five, this is what they're kind of talking about here. They're talking about areas. So, if they took squares, um, so for our side of three here, this would be three units long, so nothing changed there, but we're talking squares. So, we'd go a three by three, and if we got the area of that, we'd get 9. Okay? So for our other leg, that was the side of 4, we go 4 units by 4 units, we get an area of 4 squared or 16. Okay? Now for our hypotenuse, that was 5, we've got a side of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are just squares of the sides, basically. So you're basically squaring this side. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. Now the, the cool thing about this is that in any right triangle, if we add these squares together, if we add the leg squares, 9 plus 16, you're always going to get your hypotenuse length, or squared, the length squared. So the square of the two legs added together will give you the square of your hypotenuse. And that's going to become very important for us, and we'll, we'll show you why. But um, that's what they're talking about here. And uh, it gets, we actually get a formula out of this. So uh, this might seem a little weird right now, and it's something that we will be going over uh, again tomorrow because it is very important. We want to make sure we have a good grasp on this because this concept will not be going away. Um, you're going to see this um, 
in high school for sure, um, quite a bit. And you're going to see it quite a bit this year too. So we are starting to get into some more challenging things now, and it's good that we pay attention to that and prepare ourselves. And like I said, this, this uh, concept has been around for many years, um, as many as 4,000 years, years ago, actually. So the ancient Egyptians knew of this important and useful relationship between the sides of the right triangle. And how did it get its name? Well, today the relationship is named for a Greek mathematician who lived about 550 BC, and the Greek's name was Pythagoras, so the relationship is called the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, he didn't come up with this theorem, I mean, he discovered it, yes, but uh, there is evidence that the Egyptians knew 4,000 years ago. So, um, uh, it's been around for a long time. Alright, so, the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, if we look at the equation, we're relating the sides of a right triangle in this way. The sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. So basically, when we look at our sides, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And we want to make that a little easier. So we're going to let uh, A and B represent the legs and C represent the hypotenuse. And then we can uh, show it this way. So if a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. Basically what we set up here. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Or, we use our letters, and this is what's most commonly known as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this would be leg squared plus leg squared plus hypotenuse squared. So we're just talking about side lengths, okay? And I'm going to show you um, how we apply this. Okay, so if we were to copy down this triangle, um, we could find the area, well it says for, that we should draw a square on each side, find the area of each square, and then find c. So we're looking for C. Um, remember we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we have a right triangle, so we know this, this applies. It only applies to right triangles. So I will copy this down here. And we said that this was 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Ah, not the best. Um, let's do this instead. We know that this is 6, so I know that this has to be 6, because we want a square. We know that this is an 8 by 8, so that's a little bit longer. Doesn't look like it, but we're going to pretend. So an 8 by 8. Alright, and we're looking for C. So if we look at this square, 6 by 6 by 6, and we have an 8 by 8 by 8. Alright, so really we're looking for this length right here, which is C. Um, remember that we're looking for the areas now. So the, the square of this and the square of this will equal um, the square of C. So first thing we're going to do is um, A squared. Well, this is A. And this is B. Those are our two legs. So we're going to do 6 squared, or the area of that square, plus 8 squared. And we know that that's going to equal c squared. So 8 times 8 and 6 times 6. Well, this is 36. And this is 64. We add those together. We'll bring that down to 36 plus 64 is actually 100. And we're looking for this. So we, we run into this issue right here. We just want c. So we know that um, c squared is 100. So we know that this is going to be a square. I'm going to get rid of that. Something like this. Not the best, but we should get a square. OK? We should get a square. I know it doesn't look like a square. But we know that um, we need two side lengths that we're going to multiply to get 100, but they have to be the same because it's a square. Well, the thing that does that is the side of 10. So 10 times 10 is 100, or 10 squared is 100. 
basically what we did there to solve for C is we did the opposite of what we do um, for squaring. Uh, remember with inverses we do the um, like adding, subtracting our inverses, multiplying, dividing our inverses. So the inverse of squaring is actually a square root. So that gets rid of that. It gets rid of this too, and we just have C, and the square root of 100 is 10. So we know that that other side length is 10. I'm not sure if the squares are a route that we're going to be going. We're going to do another example where we just do the, um, where we just kind of do the math, um, because I think that this is good to think about. Uh, you are thinking about areas and squares and things like that, but I want us to get thinking more mathematically about it. Um, I'm going to check my time. You're going to have to get used to that because my videos can only be 15 minutes long, um, so I need to make sure I'm not going over. And then uh, if I need to, I'll break this into two parts. So let me check. All right, we've got about four minutes left on this one, so we can move on. And I do realize that this is a tougher concept. So we will be spending a good amount of time on it and make sure we've got a handle on it before we move on. All right. Now it says, to copy this triangle, draw a square on each side, find the area of each square, then find A. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to say, OK, our A squared plus B squared equals c squared. Remember this is, these are our two legs and this is our hypotenuse. Well they already labeled a for us so we're looking for a. So right now I know that this is going to be a squared. This is the thing we're looking for. Alright, and our other leg is 12 because it forms the right angle with a so b, this is going to be b. So b squared would be 12 squared. And that has to be, 13 would have to be our C, or hypotenuse. It is opposite the right angle. So we've got C squared, which is 13 squared. First thing we're going to want to do is figure out what those squares are. A squared is going to come back down again because we're, uh, we're solving for that. So it's not ready to be solved yet. 12 squared is 12 times 12, which comes out to be 144. And then 13 squared comes out to be, I remember this one by heart, but 13 times 13 is 169. Okay? Now, we, uh, first goal is we always want to get A squared by itself. So we're going to get this. We want to get that by itself. So the first thing we want to think about here is, okay, a squared plus 144 equals 169. So what plus 144 will give us 169? Well, the way to figure that out is we're going to subtract 144 from both sides. So I'm going to get rid of 144 over here. Inverse of adding is subtracting, and we'll see what we get. a squared is going to drop down again. 144 minus 144 is nothing. So we did. We got a squared by itself. But we also have to do minus 144 over there to keep this equality in balance here. So 169 minus 144 will get 5 here and 2 here, 1 minus 1. So we're left with a squared equals 25. So basically, this is saying what squared gives us 25 or what times itself twice gives us 25 well remember this one might be a little more obvious it's actually going to be 5 times 5 but how would we figure that out if we didn't know well we're going to do the inverse of what's happening to a squared and we are squaring it so we're doing the square root square roots are the inverses of squaring this leaves us with just a gets rid of that 2 for us and the square root of 25 is 5 so that other leg over there, A, is 5. I'm going to check my time quick. And we've got about 20 seconds left here. So what I'm going to do is um, make this a part 2. So we're going to continue with part 2 after this.